Good morning, Tim Sykes here, feeling a lot better. Thank you for all the well wishes. Uh, wanted to do a pre-market video just explaining what my thinking is right now, not just with the market. You know, I've, I've said it enough where I expect a big panic and I wanna be ready for it. But how do you be ready for it? How do you best prepare? Um, and if you look at my trades, you know, so far this month, I mean, it's nothing huge. I mean, just my loss on SOFI wiped away like half my gains. Um, a lot of what I'm doing a is trading small, which you know you can do. I know there's there's no glory in trading small or paper trading, but trading isn't all about glory. A lot of trading, successful trading, um, you know the the glory part of trading is built on the back of small trades and tests like this. Um, if you look through my trades, I'm doing a lot of testing. Um, a lot of dip buys in the morning panics and a lot of tests. I mean, I don't normally trade $200, $300 stocks like MSTR. Um, I was actually thinking about dip buying Tesla the other day, which actually would have worked um, right here. You can't really see it. Um, but, you know, had a nice morning panic from 820 down to 796. This is the morning panic that I look for. This is the morning bounce that I look for. Um, I don't care what happens, you know, after that, I'm, I'm just looking for that initial one. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes when I'm testing, because these aren't like high uh, odd strategies, they're more speculative, um, sometimes I choose the wrong one. You know, I've been trying to dip by SYSX and not, not much happening. Uh, you know, it, it, it dips and dips and dips some more. It bounced a little here, like midday. The 11 a.m. bounce actually has been working best if you wanna get into it. Um, you know, I like these these morning panics near the open because I think that creates the potential for, for max loss and, and, you know, massive panic. Uh, NWBO actually turned out to be pretty good. This one had multiple panics, but this first uh, panic, I congrats to several of you. You know, you guys nailed it. I was busy trading the wrong one. Um, you gotta understand, I'm not gonna be on my game when I'm like testing these speculative strategies. Obviously, I like morning panic dip buys, but you know, any stock out there can really morning panic uh, and, and become a good dip buy. And I should mention, like, you gotta be quick. You know, this was a nice little 30% bounce, but then it was followed by this like 70% off sell. Um, and even here, you had like a little fake out bounce. So not all panics are created equal. Um, you know, you, you kind of just have to try and test, but these are all recent winners. You know, some people say like, Tim, there's thousands of stocks. How do you know, you know, which ones to panic dip on? There's not thousands of stocks that have been multi-day runners. NWBO was a multi-day runner. GESI doesn't look like it, but it was a multi-day runner before this big panic. Um, and SYSX uh, was a multi-day runner before its recent panics. So I can't encourage you enough to really pay attention to multi-day runners. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, when I'm morning panic dip buying, I'll look for like the, the massive sell off. You know, MSTR has not been a multi day runner in a while, but this is kind of like this exhaustion panic. And, you know, this one didn't bounce. It's also crypto is getting destroyed. Um, Coinbase just keeps going lower and lower, you know, so not all stocks have to bounce. But what I want you to understand is that you don't need to make big money all the time. Um, a lot of the big money is made from small, insignificant, seemingly insignificant trades. Um, so some people say, well, Tim, why even trade at all? Just do nothing. Um, you can do that too. You know, you don't have to trade every day. Um, I've been trading less. I've been trading smaller, but I still want to, you know, kind of get in tune with the market. Um, sometimes, you know, when you do get a big panic or a big play, you know, when you feel something is, is coming and it's it's building and you, you haven't traded in a while, sometimes you're a little rusty. So um, sometimes, you know, small gains and small losses might not seem very meaningful, especially to your bottom line, but they're, they're good practice. It kind of keeps you um, not, not exactly sharp, because again, these are speculative trades, but it does give me a little bit of an advantage over people who are not trading at all and I think might be a little rusty. Uh, they're not used to like the, the chop fest that we're seeing right now. So that's my explanation. SOFI, I just screwed up. You know, I, I got a little FOMO. I missed the big spike after earnings. Um, you know, and some people say, Tim, why do you call it an earnings winner? It was down yesterday. As I explained in the challenge webinar last night, even though it was down on the day, it was up after the reported earnings. So I'm interested in the reaction to earnings. Oh, I should also mention before I forget, 
um, getting lots of questions about these boot camps. Um, you know, we only have a few spots. This is, I'll, I'll link the, uh, the link to this underneath this uh, video, but they are filling up. Um, and, you know, we're only having a few people uh, in Austin, May 26th and 27th, June 23rd, 24th in Vegas, September 1st and 2nd in Miami. Um, this is not the big in-person conference that we're going to be doing probably either in October, more likely in November. Um, still got to get the details. I know that everybody wants details in the plan months ahead of time. Understand, and I said this during the challenge webinar and I'll say it again, I'll say it every day. My team is overwhelmed right now, okay? You might not realize it because you think like, oh, everyone's losing 30, 40, 50% of their money. Not me and my top students, okay? I might not be you know, making millions right now trading, but I'm holding right near the highs with all of my uh, trading profits, okay? And that's something to be said in this market. So I'm not trying to brag, I just want you to understand there's a lot of value in a strategy that's not down 30, 40, 50, 60% right now, especially after we just had record years in 2020 and 2021. Um, so, you know, forgive me and my team for not having exact details yet. We are overwhelmed. And the reason why I say that, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift that I now have 25 millionaire students, five times what it was just two years ago, which is crazy. Like there's seven or eight more on the cusp of a million dollars too. Um, but, you know, the downside is that there's only so much we can do. And, you know, we're, we're a small team. I don't know if you realize this. We're a family business. My mom and dad both work for me. Um, so we're, we're trying our best. But understand, this is a good thing, okay? Learning in person, it's going to be me and Roland, and we're going to have special surprise guests. Um, so I would, I, if, if the roles were reversed, right? If you were listening, if I was listening to a video about this event, and I wasn't a millionaire, and I was, you know, either, I don't know, starting or, or intermediate, um, or maybe even if I had been trading for a while and it just wasn't clicking, I would attend one of these, um, or maybe even multiple ones. Like, there's, there's a lot I can teach online, but in person, in real time, um, you know, the, the biggest money that I find students are able to make are in the smallest details. And if you have that one little moment where it clicks, um, and you see it in person and you see like, oh, these other people are real. Like we're all just normal people. We don't use fake names. We don't post fake trades like a lot of websites. Um, as you'll hear me say, it's good to be real in an industry full of frauds. And that's what it is. I'm not trying to sound cocky. I'm just trying to say, look, we're real. We're crushing it. And I would try to come to these um, if you could, if you can. Um, and, you know, that's what this is. So I'm sorry to you know, bombard this video lesson, but I'm getting so many different messages asking about all this stuff. I just want to put in a video lesson. I'm going to send this video lesson to everybody. So long story short, I'm testing on different plays. SOFI, you know, I missed this run up. I got a little FOMO, fear of missing out in case you don't realize what that is. Um, and that was my bad. And I tried for the quick dip buy. I thought that, you know, if it's a morning spiker or a earning spiker, excuse me, not a morning spiker, earning spiker, um, you know, and it, it, it hit the high here. I, I got it a little off the high. I thought that it could get back and break out. As it turned out, this, this is a, a big time resistance. And I was just dip buying into, you know, something that just kept dropping. The only thing that I did well on that play was, was cut losses. And, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes like the best case is cutting losses. I probably could have cut losses a little better. Didn't necessarily have to double up, got a little stubborn. But again, this is what testing is all about. Whether I'm plus 900 or negative 900 or plus 5,000 or even negative 5,000. I know that's a lot of money to a lot of people, but to me, this is all kind of just tests. Um, I want to be ready for a, a bigger, better play. You know, NWBO, congrats to everybody. I, I really should have focused on that. This is a classic uh, penny stocking framework, seven step, uh, you know, number four crash, number five dip by, number six reshort, number four crash, number five dip by, number six re reshort. I mean, it's, it's literally the four, five, six pattern um, twice during the day. So congrats to those of you who nailed that. I need to be more disciplined. Um, but again, I'm testing and, you know, we'll, we'll see what today's market brings. But 
just stay safe. Remember, most traders are getting absolutely annihilated right now. You do not need to go down with the ship. You don't need to hold anything down 40, 50, 60, 70, 80%. It's not about conviction. That's just poor risk management. Um, you can always buy back in later. You know, like I see these people, I get messages from people in ARKK and this thing is down so much. And Kathy Wood has been, you know, labeled a hero on CNBC and she's featured everywhere. And her ETF is absolute shit. Like this is some of the worst performance I've ever seen. And I, I, it, it blows my mind that I see people defending her, saying it's going to go back up. I hope it does go back up, okay? It, it doesn't do me any good to say, like, I told you so that the crash was coming and that these things are all going to crash. It does me no good, and it gives me no pleasure. Um, but I really dislike the whole BS diamond hands. You have to hold all the way. If you don't hold, you're a traitor. Like, that's just promoter talk. Okay, that is literally promoter talk, whether it's a giant multi-billion dollar ETF or it's a piece of shit like HMBL. Remember the HMBL army? Where are they now? They're all broke. Okay, they can't even afford to use Twitter. They don't, they don't even have internet access anymore. It's, it's sickening. LTNC, remember the LTNC army? What happened to the LTNC army? ENZC, so many conspiracy theories that I'm shorting it. I've never shorted this stock in my life. I don't short, okay? I shorted Robinhood once upon a time. That was about it. Um, but, and I've actually lost in the past two years on a small loss on Robinhood. But all of these things, you do not have to hold ever. And as I'm filming this, by the way, inflation numbers just came out. Looks like it's pretty bad, uh, or at least the reaction is bad. Again, I'm not interested in the actual numbers. This is another thing I see a lot of people saying like, oh, the numbers mean this, the numbers mean that. Stop trying to analyze any numbers. Focus on the reaction. I don't even care what the numbers are, okay? I don't care about any arguments. I don't care about any assumptions. I care about the reaction. And the reaction so far, as I'm filming this, this is 8.30 in the morning, um, the reaction is not good. So I really think people will be better served um, studying the right way, testing with small patterns, um, reacting to news instead of trying to predict if you try to predict news, you're probably going to be wrong the vast majority of the time. Wow, this is this is not good. Whatever the in, the inflation numbers were, I mean, we just dropped. The Nasdaq was up one percent, one and a half percent. Now it's down a half a percent and fading fast. And this is this is the danger now. Eight tenths. Wow, this is crazy how fast this is dropping. I don't even care what the exact inflation numbers are. I'm a price action reaction kind of guy. Um, and the whole point of the way that I've been trading lately is trying to be prepared for any big crash, recognizing that the overall trend is absolutely terrible, um, recognizing that we, we took out this multi-month support. This is probably the biggest thing that no one's really talking about. Like we were in this range here with the NASDAQ and, and everyone thought we could bottom here and that turned out to be a whole fake out. And here we are just below support. Just below support doesn't usually last. You know, when a stock or an index usually breaks support, it's got a lot more to go. You know, and I see people saying S&P 500, you know, right now we're at around 4,000 or now like 3980. Um, you know, th there's a lot of support in here at 320 and 330. Okay. Like we are not near a bounce, like a, at least a big bounce right away. Maybe you get like a little technical bounce because we're a little oversold. But just be careful. People are getting annihilated because they're expecting a bounce. They're expecting things have to go back up. <clears throat> and this is not 2020, 2021 anymore. Nothing has to go back up. Um, and, you know, you, you owe it to yourself to be safe. And this is why I teach. You know, I, I might not be um, having huge, huge gains right now. But at least I'm not having huge, huge losses. Or even huge losses or even, you know, big losses. And I know... I know, sadly, that that, you know, really makes me and my top students outperforming. Um, you know, I'm green on the year. The NASDAQ is down like 25%. You do not have to be down 25%. You can always exit. You can always learn to take profits into strength. You can always learn to cut losses quickly. And then you get back in if something looks good enough. That's what trading is all about. But this whole diamond hands, crypto, uh, promoter brainwashing, it's just sad. And it's not just crypto promoters, it's penny stock promoters, it's Kathy Wood. Um, you know, you, you do not have to hold. You can go in and out of stocks and assets. And 
you know, you can just protect yourself. So that's what I'm doing. I'm protecting, I'm staying safe, I'm testing, I'm preparing. And again, I'll post a link underneath this video if you want to join me, Roland, and special surprise guests in person. I'll see you in chat. I hope this helps. Let me know. Leave a comment if videos like this help you.